Have you ever wondered if you could catch a disease from a toilet seat or a urinal? Well, it turns out you can catch a disease from a toilet seat or a urinal. Yeah! That's not good. Oh, you sounded like excited. We are going to explain which ones you can catch and which ones you can't catch. So this, this topic came about after one day I went to pee in a urinal the way guys do with their peepees and I was shaking it and then I grazed the whole top of the urinal with my dickhead. You can't just go to the sink and wash off your junk in a public restroom. I had to put it in my pants and then just note to self myself to make sure I clean it thoroughly when I am able to. Dude, you gotta stop saying peepee. Oh, get over it! You're not very manly! Some viral and parasitic STIs can live outside of your body for a limited amount of time. Theoretically, they can be transmitted from contact from a toilet seat, but it's not very likely. STI stands for a sexually transmitted infection. It used to be STD for sexually transmitted disease. And before that, it was VD for venereal disease back in the 70s. I think maybe after every generation, they have to rebrand it. They try to make it a new and hip kind of thing for people not to get in their crotch. Yeah, like venereal disease. Ooh, that's bad. Well, you kids that, nowadays but... won't even know what the word venereal means. I don't even not, know what it means. I don't means. know what it means. I mean, I know what it means, but I don't know what it means. You know what I mean? Most of these STD, STI, bacteria and viruses prefer warm environments like human tissue. A common misconception is that pubic lice, AKA crabs, can be spread easily through sitting on a toilet seat or furniture. SpongeBob, what are you doing in there? <laughs> Crab, Mr. Krabs. But this is rare because lice can't live that long away from a human body and their feet can't hold on to or walk on smooth surfaces like toilet seats. Or urinals. But you know what? That's what all our research tells us in this. But from my personal past, I remember living with a roommate. Actually, there was four roommates. And one of us got crabs. It wasn't me. I wasn't the originator. But one of us got crabs and then spread it to everybody else. And like nobody was boning each other or anybody's girlfriends and stuff. So. Nah, baby, baby, I got crabs from Sid on a chair. I didn't even bang any other girls. No, it's just you, baby. It's all about you. You got the crabs. You gave me the crabs. Arr, arr, arr. Were you sharing underwear? We weren't like huggy, touchy or anything. And how do you know you got had crabs? Oh, you know you have crabs because it just itches and itches. <laughs> and the only way you can get rid and, and you can see them. Like if you- What? If, oh yeah. Oh. And they look nasty like this. That's a legit crab. <laughs> That's, a legit crab. <laughs> That's what they- <laughs> And it's just freaking gross. But you can't get them off. You have to go to the drugstore and get this Rid-X or like lice removal shampoo. That's the only thing. You can shave down there. Hey, you can that's clean. not bad for a sexually transmitted disease. Just no, going no. to CVS and getting something and just scrubbing it away. Yeah, that's pretty mild. It's pretty mild. So that's Ugh, that's a gross. good one. That's an easy one. Was this close-up picture of crabs from a female vagina or a male pubic area? It's all the same, man. Oh, it won't man. Matter. Vaginas are so pretty, except when you look at them very up close with a microscope and they have crabs. The good news is STIs like herpes, HPV, gonorrhea, syphilis, chlamydia, HIV, lives for a couple minutes once outside the body, and that's it. And saliva stops or kills HIV. So if I was with a girl and I was gonna have sex with her and worry that she had HIV, I could just spit on her vagina <laughs> before might work. I... Boink. Might work. But don't take medical advice from me. I wouldn't take any advice from you. Then why are they watching this video? These STIs can't survive in air or on surfaces, so you can't get those from a toilet seat. But some viral STIs can survive outside of your body for a little bit of time. Hepatitis B could enter your body from a toilet seat through freshly deposited blood or semen. That guy makes me want to walk up to him and give him a hug. This one's better. But would need an open wound to come into contact with the virus. Hepatitis B symptoms include abdominal pain, dark urine, fever, joint pain, loss of appetite, nausea and vomiting, weakness and fatigue, yellowing of skin and whites of the eyes, also called jaundice. A damp toilet seat can spread Trichomoniasis. Does it matter how the toilet seat got damp in the first place? Is it like moisture in the air or someone's disgusting ass sweat? Could be both. As long as it's moist. Moist can be such a good thing, but also a bad thing. But it would need to be freshly deposited. Plus, come into immediate content with your genital region. Which can happen. Like if someone was to jerk off on a toilet seat and then you go to sit down on it with a huge gaping gash on your ass cheek. Ian has a big gaping gash between his ass cheeks. That's because I take manly sized poops. You take little boy poops. I'm not gonna go there. And I don't know where you take them. 
When trichomoniasis symptoms do occur, they often begin five to 28 days after the person gets the condition, but can take much longer. The most common symptoms for women are vaginal discharge, which can be white, gray, yellow, or green, and usually frothy with an unpleasant smell. Vaginal spotting or bleeding. Genital burning, itching, redness, or swelling. Frequent urge to urinate. Pain during urination or sexual intercourse. You know, some people like pain during sexual intercourse. I don't know about the STD kind of pain. Something tells me you do. The most common symptoms in guys are discharge from the urethra, burning during urination or after ejaculation, an urge to urinate frequently. You ever have your balls or your dick touch the toilet water when you're sitting on the toilet? My penis head has grazed the top of the water surface a time or two, yes. Most likely if you're a guy and you're sitting on the toilet, then you're sitting in uh, a pool of your own turd. So I guess if you, your own poop touched your penis, could that get you sick? If even if it's a bacterial infection coming from the poop that you're grazing the top of a poop with your penis head and some of the poop gets into your pee pee hole, could that give, uh, give you an infection, Randy? I think if it got inside, like if your little pee pee hole opened up Mama. like a little, like a snake and started biting away at the turd. And, and swallowing it and bringing it up into the urethra. I'm sure bad things could come but It's a good that. thing penises don't generally do that or right. act that way. Right, right. Our research says it's highly unlikely that you're going to catch a disease from your dick hitting the water. And so far, there hasn't been any documented cases of that happening. So the odds of that happening are pretty slim. So just don't ever get into that situation. Some of us, we can't avoid it because our dicks hang so low. You know what I'm saying? No. So you're probably best to, if, if you got wipes, clean the toilet seat before you go, or you could put one of those toilet seat covers if they have them. And what I typically do is I just take toilet paper and I just kind of spread it sheets on top of the toilet seat. But you could sit on a seat like this and just drop your dookies from- Plump, from, plump. Or do what I do. Never go poop in public places. Nobody wants to smell that stuff anyway. I, I keep that 100% private. I will keep my poop in my butt to the point of internal explosion. You know, that's one reason I don't like seafood. Because of the crabs? Because of the crabs. Why would you want to eat a bigger version of something that's considered an STD on your dick? Every grade, including high school, I never sh at school. I held it in. The cramps would get so bad, I used to bang on the bottom of my stomach to make the pain go away. I, that is freaking bizarre. I'd be out playing and I'd be like, hold on. Ugh. Yeah, that's what he was doing. It would go away and then and that would somehow relieve the pain and So after you did this, you felt a relief. Yeah, in Got my it. in my bowels. Have you ever seen big dark pubes on the toilet seat or the urinal when you go? I'm always seeing them. These big long black pubes on the bottom of the urinal. It's like, how the f does that get there? I find them on the top of the urinal, right next to the handle. <laughs> They're always sprinkled on top. Some people just enjoy jiggling their ding dong and then they're yanking some pubes out and they sprinkle it on the top so other people can see their pubes. I think people would have to... They'd have to yank it out and or put they, it on top. Or they so much bush there that they whip it out and there's like hairs all over their, their hand and when they go to flush it, the hairs just drop on the top of the urinal. Maybe, or they're just shaking it and the hair just creates a rain of pubes. I can't imagine what their house is like. They must have pubes everywhere. Pubic rain, pubic rain. Get it? Purple rain, Prince? I get it. It was funnier than that. <laughs>